In the previous lecture, you learned how to manually set the date and time in the ESP32 integrated real-time clock. Obviously, the problem there is that uh, you'll have to do that manually every time that your ESP32 regains power because power is necessary for the ITC to retain time and date. So what we'll do in this lecture is to learn how to use an internet clock service, which uses an atomic clock to provide date and time information programmatically to devices like the ESP32, your computer, etc. To do that, we'll be using the Wi-Fi capability that you've learned about in previous lectures, as well as the NTP time library that makes it very easy to automatically acquire date and time information from a compatible NTP server. So I just want to show you a couple of things before we begin. First, where are those servers? What are the locations? How to find them? So if you're interested, you can go to this website, ntppool.org. And um, depending on where you are in the world, you can find a NTP server that is nearby. You don't actually have to do that because the NTP time library will find the default time server and use it to sync. You don't have to tell it which one to use. But uh, in my case, I thought I would use one that is nearby me. So uh, in Oceania, for example, there are these servers that uh, you can try out. And there's in Australia in particular, you can drill down and find the servers that are nearby. So for example, I can go for this one here, copy it and set it in my script right here, paste it in here. Again, this is optional. You don't have to do that. But I know that many of you are curious and you want to optimize your scripts. And that's one way to do it. Now, no matter which NTP server you choose, it will report time to the library in UTC. So the time that will come back to you is always coordinated universal time and not the time at your local time zone. If you want to be able to see the time at your local time zone, you will need to convert it. And I'm also going to show you how to do that. So I am in Sydney. The time right now is 9 16 in the morning, but UTC is 10, 16 in the evening. And that's the time that the NTP server will report to the NTP time library. Speaking of the NTP time library, uh, here is the documentation. Uh, I'm now looking at the MicroPython uh, readerdocs.io um, website which contains the documentation for this particular library and it shows you how to set it and how to actually use it. So here's an example. Uh, I built my example from this. Connected to Wi-Fi, which is necessary for NTP time to work. And then uh, it, you just call the synchronization set time, this function right here, and it will automatically go out to a default NTP server, grab the time, and then use it to do the synchronization. Let's continue with the script itself and see how it all works. I've got detailed documentation and uh, links to all of the resources here. So you can uh, go and uh, do a bit of uh, background reading and um, understand how everything is connected. But I think this script uh, will be self-explanatory in a moment. First of all, we need to connect to the internet. So all of this code should be familiar to you if you have done the Wi-Fi experiments earlier in this course. And um, just as a reference, you can have a look at the Wi-Fi get test.py file where I'm actually doing the exact same thing right here. So by the time we finish with the do connect function, we have a local Wi-Fi network connection, and then we can continue with the time and uh, date clock synchronization. As I said earlier, I am setting the NTP host to be a local server nearby here in Australia. Then I'm creating the RTC object like we did in the previous lecture, because eventually I want to set the hardware clock with the actual time and date. Check to see that we have connection to Wi-Fi. And the first thing that I do is to print out the local time 
as it is right now before synchronization. And of course, this is going to be in incorrect time, especially if I've set it manually or I may have never set it before. Once I do that, just for comparison, I'm going to go and set the time. I'm going to call the set time method on the NTP time object. And that is going to go out. It's going to use this server, in my case, sync the clock to UTC. So then what is happening is that the uTime object is going to have a new time set, which is going to be equal to whatever currently is happening at UTC in terms of time. It's going to be this time here. If something goes wrong and uh, NTP time fails to sync, then I'm going to have a exception and print out the error message and the program is going to end. All right. Next, I'm going to do a little bit of work because remember, I don't just want to have the date and time in UTC, but I want it in my local time zone. So I'm going to take the local time as it is in UTC and store it in the uTime object. I'm going to store it in this variable. I marked it as UTC. Then I'm going to use the make time method for uTime to create a new object, which is going to be local. Still, at this point in time, because I've equated these two, current time date local is going to be equal to current time date UTC. But then I'm going to do this operation here. And this is what actually shifts the UTC time to be local time. So at the moment in Australia, in Sydney in particular, we are 11 hours ahead of UTC. So what I'm doing is I'm taking 11 times 3,600 seconds for each hour. So I've got this many seconds ahead of UTC. And I'm going to add this time to the current local time and then save the result on the current variable. So eventually, current time date local is going to have the accurate time and date in my local time zone. So then I'm going to just print this out down here. I'm going to use new time, local time, pass the current time, date, local, and that will show me the time at my location. So all good so far. I could actually stop here and I have a local time to work with. But what I haven't done yet is to reset the RTC with my new local time as acquired from the atomic internet clock. So remember that these are two different things. Right now, time is stored in the uTime object, not in the RTC, right? So I'm going to use the same method to set the RTC as in the previous example, like this. And I've got now two options, and then you can decide which one is appropriate for you. If you want to set the RTC with the UTC time, then you will take apart the current time date UTC table, refer to each of its component individually, and use this information to set RTC to the UTC time. But if you want the RTC to be set to your local time zone time, then instead of current time date UTC, you use current time date local. And again, I'm, I'm using local time to convert that to convert the tuple in this variable into a uTime object. So then I can use it to reset the RTC. So exactly the same method, it's just the source of the time differs depending on whether you want UTC or local time zone time. I'm going in this example with local time zone time. Eventually, the time is in RTC and I can use the same method as in the previous example right here to extract it and print it out into the shell. Or it could be a screen. In your case, for example, you, you may want to create a clock that uses an OLED display to show the time and date. Anyway, so here I've got a bunch of print statements um, displaying both UTC time and local time. So I should probably say UTC time here, just a bit more correct, because both are coming 
All right, so this is UTC and this is local time. And then finally down here, just every one second, I will print out the date and time directly from the real time clock, which I've set to be my local time. All right, so it was a very long explanation. So uh, there's a lot happening in this script. So I invite you to take a little bit of time to go through this line by line, make sure that you understand how it works. But let's run it and make sure that it actually does work. So run the current script. Uh, what's happening? OK, I think uh, we need to restart the back end. All right, and press play again. Hmm. Something's happening in line 50. Uh, OK, so what's happening is that I have not stored the Wi-Fi settings underscore test JSON file into onto the ESP32 file system. So let's do that right now. So it's this file here. Yep, I'm just going to upload it. And now it should work. Can connect with these credentials. Let's double check the credentials are correct. Yes, actually, they do look correct. So try again. There you go. This time it worked. So the time right now, I'm going to bring up the internet time from um, time is. So we can compare. So we've got the current time 927. As you can see in Sydney right now it's 927. And I'm going to click on stop because I want to go a little bit earlier and see the UTC time. And there's a UTC time as it came from the NTP server, the UTC time is 22, 27, 35. So back then what it, when it was acquired, it was, uh, it's noted right here. I've got an error here with the local time that should be UTC time instead of local. And you can see that it's 22, 26. That was a couple of minutes ago. So that was the raw date, U UTC raw date as it was acquired from the NTP server. So I want to make a little fix here. So this is U time before synchronization, and this is U time, but UTC time after synchronization. Because once line seventy six runs, then NTP time synchronizes U time with UTC. This time right here. Okay, so um, this was a bit. That was a bit convoluted, but it should take a, a few minutes to walk through this code to understand how it works. And um, this gives you a relatively straightforward way to sync your ESP32's real-time clock with an internet atomic clock. And from there, to convert that UTC time to your local time zone time.